welcome back to my channel my name is kiki lafleur and today i'm going to show you how i created this full glam makeup look that is guaranteed to turn heads so if you want to see how i did this keep watching <laughs> Okay, you guys, so I do have my moisturizer on. I do have oil on my skin to help seal it in, which is why I look so shiny. But I didn't put any eye cream on. I'm going to put on two really quick just to give my under eye area a nice added boost, especially since I'm going with a bit heavier of makeup. I'm going in with this Verfons eye cream. This is a snake venom peptide brightens eye cream. Yeah, it's gimmicky and I understood that when I purchased it, but I didn't care. <laughs> I was like, I want to try it. I want to see what happens and does it it claims to have tightened your under eye area, your crow's feet and things like that. Like it was so gimmicky especially the ad that i seen and i'm sure you've probably seen it as well you see women and men or someone putting it on the family member and then all of a sudden it just clears up i fell for it um but it's not bad like regardless of the gimmick it's not bad i use i prefer to use it mostly when i go out when I'm doing a full glam look, that's why I'm doing it now because this is the time that I really would be doing it. Although I'm not going out after this, I'm going to wash all of this off, but that's okay. This is my process. Um, and it recommends that you massage the skin. And I'm just going to do a little bit because I have this headband and everything else going on that I would have done this first when it comes to my skincare it's just so that i can work it in next i'm gonna go in with belief this is um a moisturizing eye balm that i love because it just adds a lot of moisture to the skin so i will put this on like as if it's a serum because it does has more of a serum texture to it and this is more of a cream so placing this on plus is also going to seal in you know that first serum because it's a bit thicker and moisturizing and hydrating. And it just feels good to give your eye a nice massage. It's, I feel a lot of the pressure sometimes in my brows and it just feels good to lift and release some of that pressure. So that's just a little tidbit of what I would do getting ready for a full face glam of makeup is definitely make sure that I add these eye creams. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put some primer. I'm gonna use this um, Lenar Magic Blurring Primer. This is from Rem Beauty. And I'm just, I love that it has a nice mattifying effect. It's just, and it's pretty. It comes out the tube so nicely. So I'm just going to use my hand to blend this in. Especially the areas where I get really oily. And the rest that's on my hand, I'm just going to blur that out to the edges of my face. Just so that it's nice everywhere it gets, you know, some product. For the foundation, I'm going to use my Depotted Kevin O'Quan's foundation. This one is in shade 13 and this one is in shade 12. And I love using Kevin O'Quan, especially during the winter season because it's so pigmented and just I feel like I, I can go full like this is full coverage so in the winter I definitely love going more full coverage because you can get away with it you know like compared to the summer you just you just can't no matter how much you want to <laughs> no no better how bad your skin underneath looks going full face in the summer is just not cute it's not like 
you know what I mean. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. I'm going to scrape some off and I'm going to warm both on my hand. So I have the, four, the 12 here and the 13 here. And the reason why I'm using two different shades is because this is one of my tricks. I just love to do the add more depth and differentiation and just a 3D, 4D look to my skin without it being flat. And sometimes I like to mix some shades. So I'm going to use my favorite um, Sephora Row Rouge brush. I'm just going to warm this in my hand and I'm going to place this on the highlighted areas of my face. I'm just not going to go too far underneath my eye because I definitely want to put a nice highlight there. And a good thing about this is I don't have to use a sponge and pack on so much product in order to get a full face. That's why I like using Kevin O'Quan because it's so pigmented. It's very much like using the pro palettes like Graftobian and things like that in order to really get a full face look. You, you are able to use so um, you're able to use such a small amount of product and this reminds me of that. That's why I love Kevin O'Quan. He's just, I don't know, I think he's made for the pros. He's made for everyone, but I don't know, like he, he, he definitely go in the pro range for me, at least. As far as like using Kevin O'Quan, like, so my skin is not the best because I just got over a flu unfortunately I had a hundred and three temperature so I am slightly dehydrated and I, I, even though I've been drinking immense amount of water tea so on and so forth but my I was sweating a lot and that was on purpose because when you're sick it's really good to sweat it out. So I'm looking at my skin. I'm like, I need to exfoliate. <laughs> and I need to drink get a lot more water. So what I'm really I'm just working this product into those highlights areas. And I'm layering. That's the other reason why you see me focusing on just on these areas, these highlighted areas so much is because I'm also layering this product on. Now I'm gonna go into the darker shade and this isn't the contour, this is just adding balance to the face in areas where the face would have these two shades blended in somewhat. Because as you can see, like it's not necessarily darker. It's just in a. It just has more pink to it. I like to put, especially when I'm doing full face, um, my foundation lower on my decollete because when you have a full face of makeup and it looks flawless and you look down at your neck and you're like, but what's going on there? Like it has to, everything has to match. It has to, everything has to be smooth and flawless. So if you feel like your neck needs a little bit of help add some makeup there as well all right so I'm pretty satisfied I'm just gonna go over a little bit of the highlights with this brush as well with this shade just a little bit so 
So before I do my conceal, I'm going to go in and put some primer on. I'm going in with T's. This is Salute to the Armor um, eyeshadow prep that I've just been enjoying so much. Taking BYOD's EB330 synthetic um, stipple brush and I'm just going to blend that all the way into the brows as well as the lower lash. Next I'm going in with this Ardell's photo face concealer that I'm enjoying. I'm going to warm it on my hand first. Just gonna use this to highlight. It's a more of a soft highlight just for now until I'm able to go in and really expand on the highlight. I'm also gonna put some of this into the lid. And the reason why I'm using this is because it has, is not, it's only a couple of shades lighter. So I can put this in any areas like over my lip where I feel like I want a bit more coverage. I can even go further on the side of my nose, but I'm not going to do that. But you know what I mean? Like it's, I'm able to get away with doing a little bit extra with this. Just going to go in now with my concealer brush by Real Technique. And this is in shade dark 10.5 next I'm gonna go in with Anastasia's contour kit this is where I'm gonna do a bit more highlighting and I'm gonna go in with this shade right here I'm just gonna take the smallest amount in this inner corner of the under eye I'm just stippling it on because I, I want to have control of how much product actually comes out. Taking that same concealer brush, I'm just going to blend that in. With this RT brush 09N, I'm going to go in with this darker color here. I'm just going to contour really really lightly in certain areas and I'm going to build upon it with this stipple brush this is a MAC 130 I'm just going to blend that out now what is ever left on my brush I'm just going to drag that out Now because I'm using a shade four times darker, there's no need to like make it so intense. It's already darker in its intensity. That's the reason why I'm able to actually go on with the dark color but apply a small amount. Like understanding why you're doing it helps. Just because it's a full glam does not mean you have to pack on the makeup in order to have impact. You can build on it. So let's say if I want to, I can build and add more depth in the back compared to the front of the face, you know, then you, then you're getting somewhere, you know, and you know why you're doing something, but some people, they just put it all in. It's all dark. There's the level of intensity is high everywhere. And so your face looks crazy in the end. And I don't know. I don't like it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't like it. And I used to be that person, so I understand. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not going to put too much more on the brush. I'm actually going to go in with this shade here. I'm going to mix it in with this. I just want a shadow. And I'm using the outer edges of the stipple brush to place product.
And if I feel like I put too much um, contour, I will go in with the highlight and just work it in. Blend it in. I'm going to take this same brush with that same middle color. I'm just going to go into the crease. I'm just going to use that RT brush and just blend out any harsh edges in that crease. This isn't meant to be perfect. It's just meant to give a shadow. Add some depth in that crease area. And again, this is why I don't put powder because I get to play. You have room to play. You have room. It's like using gel polish. There's room to play until you cure it. So I didn't put anything extra on the contour brush. I'm just going in and adding some more depth in areas of my face that have shadow. I am though gonna add a bit more because there's hardly any in a rush for the keepers book because I definitely want this area to be a bit more juicy, perky. And I'm I don't, I don't know why I'm going for because it takes away this is this absorbs light, so it makes my lip look bigger. Next, I'm going in with Rich Coral. This is a cream color base by MAC. I'm gonna apply this in my cheek area and just add a bit of warmth for the blush placement. And I'm using MAC's 131 stipple brush. Just gonna blend out any edges. And when you're doing full makeup, it's really good to add a cream blush. Like if you don't have a cream blush or if you have a base, from MAC and then apply the powder, your blush lasts 10 times longer. You can do that with light makeup as well if you're doing something soft, because blush seems to be the first one to disappear. I'm gonna put this just a little bit closer since it's so soft and shade. It has a nice warming effect to my skin. And because this is full coverage, I definitely want to do whatever I can to add a bit more warmth. Because all I see is my golden and neutral undertone. I want to add a bit more of that pinkiness to it as well. I'm going to go in and do my brows slightly. I did have them dyed, tinted, so thankfully there's not much to do. I love it when it's like that. I'm not going to go crazy with the brows because one, there I have to do the eyeshadow and I like to go in my brows and sometimes I mess up my brows so I'm just going to add a bit more depth to these brows but I'm not going to do too much. I'm going to come back later and finish it up. Right now I'm just making sure I get the shape. Okay so for the eyes I'm going to go in now with these NYX, NYX pencils depotted. I'm going to go in with this brown here. I'm going to use this is MAC 209 pencil brush and I'm going to create a wing and I'm going to fill it in. I'm also going to take the same onto the lower lash line.
And I'm also going to blend that out. I'm going in now with this shade right here. This is Max Brown Script. I'm going in with a contour brush by Revlon. And I'm going to put this where that brown shadow is. That brown cream color. Making sure to blend that into the wing as well. I'm gonna take a smudger brush and I'm just going to get closer to that wing and just add more of that eyeshadow so i'm also softening the edges because it's a clean brush i'm not adding product but i'm able to soften it up just so that i get more of that sharper wing on the bottom and it's more gradient at the top now i'm dipping the smudger brush into the brown script and i'm placing that onto the lower lash line And it's just building from here. Once you start to add your first color and you like it, you're just building and you're building up in shade, not down. You can always go further darker, but know why you're doing it and when. With another matte color, this is Rule. I'm going to use a flat shaded brush by Ace Beauty. I'm going to place that right above that first color. Making sure to overlap. You have to overlap. I'm gonna take a clean um, crease brush. This is Complex Cultures crease brush. I'm just gonna blend out any edges. Right below that brown script on the lower lash line, I'm also gonna add that rule. I'm just gonna blend it out into that wing. So I'm going in with Stilo's Vintage. This is, I don't even know if this brand ever made it, but this, this, <laughs> I received this product years ago, years ago when they were starting to come out. So sorry guys, I just realized that when I said the name because I don't remember hearing it ever since. So I don't think they made it as a brand, but it's a nice dark plum. But it's not on the reddish side, it's more the neutral side of plum. So I love that because it doesn't have too much of anything. It, if anything, it allows you to look at it as if it's more on the black end, just a lighter shade, which is also why I like it. So I'm going to use this to line the top lid. Very close to the lash line. So this is a cold pencil, so it's going to take me a little bit to just work it in. But it just gives me a nice soft depth in that freaking... I love it. I love it. I, I love it. I love it. I love when a product does exactly what I want it to do. So it's just adding shadow. Because sometimes black can be too harsh. And I'm going to use black, but it's like there's levels to it. So right now I'm using this for the lash line. Just to deepen this area. Add a bit more depth. Warm it up, pretty much. I'm also going to put it on a lower lash line as well. So you know why I also get excited is because it's like I don't have to... Um, smudge it out that's why i'm like it, it just does what i need it to do like it it does what i need it 
to do and i don't have to smudge it out because of the shade it is it looked like it's already been smudged out and i'm like oh, one less thing for me to do so definitely enjoying this pencil I'm privileged to have an opportunity to have Stilo because they, it was a woman and a man, is a, is a couple, um, but they knew what they were doing. They, they knew what they were doing. All right, so now I'm going to go in with Max Feline and I'm going to add this to my waterline. And I know they don't make Feline anymore, but I got to use it. <laughs> like, I got to use it. And the reason why I say that is because feline runs. So putting it on your waterline, although it's perfect, it's it's so soft, but it will run. You will have mascara, in pl I mean, you will have this liner in places that you don't want it. But I have it and I bought back up during that time when they, because I loved it so much. And I just gotta use it. Gotta use it up, you guys. So. There's another black that's out there by MAC and it doesn't run. It's so good. I just haven't had an opportunity to buy it because I knew I had these. But I do have to get another one because it's good. I love MAC. <laughs> I really do. With this generic D, um, angle brush, I'm going to go in with Max, Max Carbon shade right here, which is black, a matte black. Just going to pack the brush on, and I'm going to put this onto the outer corners of the eye, and I'm going to wing it out. And because I have that violet liner, it's actually giving this powder something to stick to while adding depth. But I, I, although the brush is packed on, it's not crazy. Like, I packed on the brush, but I also like, how do I say it? I didn't wipe it off, but I dust it off in the lid. Now that that color is placed on an angle, I'm just going to use a clean. This is a Sigma brush. It's rubbed off, but this is a crease brush. I'm going to actually dip a little bit of that into... So I'm going to go back into brown script. And now that I have a little bit of that black there, this is going to add a bit more depth. And I want to like round out a little bit of this angle just to soften it into the lid some more. making sure to start at the base of that and then I'm just going to blend it out. Because for me, I have a little bit more brow space, lid space, so I like to fill that in. If you have smaller eyes, then you can get away with having you know the shade going in more of an angle with maybe a slight curve in but i have way more runway up here that i have to fill in and it has to look soft as it goes up and out i'm just going to go back and forth with that carbon and making sure the depth of the outer corners of the eye has a lot more depth so going back to the smudger brush i'm going in with a little bit of carbon and this shade as well for the lower lash line just going to add a bit more depth to the waterline just gotta blot my face a bit like that's the other thing when you're when you have oily skin 
and you notice that your oils are coming through your makeup fast it's because you <laughs> uh, I've been sick so I have an excuse <laughs> it's because your pores are more clogged than they should be okay I know I need a facial so now I'm gonna go in with trophy wise by Fenty and we'll take some of this onto my finger I'm gonna place this onto the center of my lid now that majority of the color is on the center I'm gonna go on the inner corners as well as the outer corner but I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. So when you got nails on, it's a bit harder to reach. So I'm going to go in with my 217 by MAC. I'm just going to add some more in there top part of the eye because my nail touched it there so I have no choice just gonna match that side I'm gonna take the opportunity to put some of this on the inner corners of the eye as well as adding more product onto the center Gonna blend a little bit into the outer edge just so that it's no strong lines. Now, if you feel like you put too much on the outer edge, it's okay to go in with that darker crease brush and just brush it off. You don't really brush it off, you kind of dull it down. I'm gonna go in with Mean Money, it's a nice soft sheen by Fenty and I'm going to place this on the inner corner of the eye and it's just going to brighten up that area without adding more glitter or sheen to it next I'm going to go ahead and powder my face with the Givenchy powder this is in the shade Pris um, Prism Libre that they don't make anymore unfortunately but I'm gonna clean up underneath the eye and any other areas that I feel need a little bit of touching up before I add the powder especially if it's shiny as you know my oils are coming through I like to just mattify them really quickly I'm making sure that I took off any extra powder in my hand before coming underneath the eye I'm gonna take a little bit of this banana by Huda Beauty and I'm gonna put it in my puffer brush I'm gonna dust the excess onto my hand I'm gonna place that into the highlighted areas only of my face Going in with Carmel Cuties Fenty Bronzer for my nose contour. I like to start in my brows and add more depth so that it has something to connect to. Just gonna use a little bit of this contour brush, the cream contour, just to blend out that bronzer. Next, I'm gonna go in with my 
under eye con my concealer brush and I'm just going to blend in any harsh lines. It just should look like a shadow. You shouldn't see it. Like you shouldn't notice it and be able to pinpoint it. And for my contour, last but not least, I'm going in with Max Cajun Powder, which is a nice, loose, dark powder. It's more of a neutral tone. It doesn't have too much red. doesn't have too much yellow. Like, it's... I like it. I like it a lot. I'm going to go in with my Angle um, Tarte Brush. I'm just going to hit those contours. And last but not least, to put all of this together before I do my blush, I'm going to go in with my Cashew by Fenty setting powder. I'm going to make sure to put any excess in my hand. I'm just going to go all over my face. This makes sure it gets any spots that I may have missed but also it evens out the highlight and the low light. Like cashew for me is my shade. Like if I wanted to just use that as a setting powder by itself, that will be the shade. So that's how you know which shade to do this last with. It will be that sh one shade that you can use all over your face if you wanted to without any highlight or low lights and it doesn't change your complexion by much really so I like this peachy shade that I got going on so I'm gonna continue with that this is max um, honey jasmine blush i'm gonna use a mac 168 brush to add a bit more of that warmth to the cheekbone without changing the color all right so now that the powder is on i like to go in and finish up the eye i'm gonna go in now with phase zero this is a liquid uh, gel liquid liner and I'm just going to create a point in the inner corners of the eye as well as drag this wing all the way to the end. I'm also going to drag this on the lower lash line. With that same smudger brush, I'm going to go back into that carbon black shade and I'm going to just smooth out the edges. And I'm coming, kind of going like in a C curve, like a, a half circle. I'm bringing the carbon up half and I'm just curving it. And the thing is because the gold glitter is there, no matter how much I blend in the black, it doesn't actually turn black. It's like has that goldish shimmer to it so it still looks like a gradation it doesn't like look like it's a harsh harsh black so now I'm gonna go ahead and put on some lashes they're gonna be dramatic I have these lashes in a box that I've been wanting to try 
as well as a couple of these short wispies that I have in single wispy. So I'm just gonna be super extra. So I'm just gonna put on some primer. This is Mellowways Eyelash Primer. So while my mask, while this mascara is still on, I'm gonna apply my lash glue. This is Duo Brush, and I have to look down because normally I can go fast with this, but because I put the primer on, I have to be careful because I want to use the primer to fix it, so I can't I can't do too much movement. I'm just going to use this lash comb just to straighten out my lashes because the brush moves it around. So the reason why I'm using, I'm doing a lash primer knowing that I'm putting on lashes is mainly because sometimes I do it when I want my lashes to look really, really thick. But I'm doing it because I want to apply the least amount of mascara on the inner parts of the eye. And I want my lashes to stand out so that they blend in well with the falsies. The front particularly. I want the front to blend in with the falsies. Next, I'm going to go in with my Complex Culture Mascara. This is the exclusive level 5 in 1 lengthening mascara. I'm just gonna quickly get this on I already have my lashes prepped so if you're gonna do this type of technique make sure your lashes are prepped meaning if you're gonna use half make sure it's cut already so I'm just getting the mascara into the base my voice is getting raspy <clears throat> into the base and then I'm just going back and forth. This is really coating my lashes. So I'm not going to use Complex Culture. I'm going to go in with my Morphe because it has the type of brush that I need. That brush that's on the Complex Culture is really, really dense. This one is more aired out, meaning it's the bristles are a bit more spaced where it doesn't apply too much product it scrapes off while it's applying it just helps to smooth it out that mascara put a lot which is great without primer but with that primer it's a bit much and granted i did have complex culture for a while as well as this morphe mascara so it's drying up a bit more so that means that the product is not as super smooth as it would have been when i first opened it which is fine because i love my mascaras when they kind of been around a bit compared to when they straight out the box it's a little bit too fresh but you just got to know when to use it and when not to use it and i'm just inspecting I feel like it's a bit more clumpier than I want it to be so I'm just going to smooth out my tips I also want to make sure I got all the whites the white primer so to quickly go in with these lashes so I'm using the very inner part of the lashes, but I'm applying it at the end. I hope you're able to see that. So this would normally go on the inner part, but it's the shortest to the longest. And I'm going to apply that. And I'm not applying it directly on the end of the lash. I'm going a little further in.
so now that the lashes are on, I like to bend them down just so that they fit more snug on top of my lashes. I'm actually going to pinch these. I want them to be a bit more snug. Also further down. Because pinching it drops it, so I'm able to kind of have it level out a bit more with my natural lashes, which pretty much starts here. So that when it's leveled down, even though it's sticking out a bit more, it's still shorter. So it's going in that nice gradation that I want. Or leveling, I should say. Instead of it being all the way up here and then having that short drop, I want it. It's like literally a nice angle. And now that the mascara is on, and if I want to go in and add more depth, this is where I will go in with my complex culture and just kind of brush in any darker areas at the base, especially where this falsy is and where my lashes are. Definitely add more depth in there. Even onto the lashes to add more length of my lashes, not the falsies. So I'm just going to apply some glue onto my lower lash line. And it's okay if it goes on the lashes because now I'm going to take complex culture, especially since I know that it's dried up a bit. I don't really need to work so hard. I'm just going to apply that onto the lashes and that's going to help to clean up any glue that fell onto the lash. But you have to move fast. Because you don't want the glue to dry onto your lashes. So it just cleans it up. That way I have the glue there but I don't have to worry about my mascara either. I'm going to do one eye at a time actually. I'm going to start with these short wispies. I'm just going to place them wherever my heart's desire. I'm actually going to take these single lashes. These are long, so I'm going to place just one or two in the outer corner. Just to be a little bit more dramatic. Just two. So the front lashes are a bit too long for me, so I'm just going to cut an angle off. So finally, I'm going to get to my brows. I'm going to go in with Dominique's brow pencil. And I'm going to clean this up and just add some more shape to it as well as some brow gel. Going in with Persana's Brow Gel in shade brown. Just going to swipe up and laminate my brows a bit more.
for my lips i'm going in with nk's makeup this i got from the bay supply store this is a nice neutral brown i'm just gonna overline my lips I'm gonna bring this in and blend it into the lip even more. Going in with um, Juvia's Libra lipstick. Just gonna use a small detail brush to blend. I really that I really want it. I want the outer edges to be blended in more so that that brown pencil can shine through and have a nice gradation. It doesn't just show lip color and then liner. I want it to be blended. And if I want to go in with more, I can. Sometimes I like taking whatever is left on that product, whatever is left on a brush, and just going over that line a little bit to add a bit of this color to it to tone it down a bit more. But not so much that it goes away, just enough where it's like you can see the lip has a shadow. It doesn't you it doesn't look like I have a liner on it just looks like I have a shadow there so pretty just to be extra which I have to be I'm gonna go in with some lip jelly by Mac this is what shade is this five minutes later I don't know the shade but it's orange I'm actually just gonna use a little bit on my finger I don't want it too much on the outer edges of the lip I just really want it on the center and by blending my lip together it's gonna blend out and sheer out but with Mac I have to blot <laughs> if I don't it'll be all over cuz I'm and I think it's mainly because I'm too heavy-handed with Mac like Mac is pigmented and sometimes I feel like I'm heavy-handed that's why even that little dot I put too much because it's it's going it was I felt it on the inner corners of my mouth so I'm gonna add a little bit of chunky highlight but it's also gonna have like a new champagne sheen to it this is max naked you mineralized skin finish and this has so much glitter and chunks of glit like it's so pretty and the marble effect is so freaking gorgeous that it's just fun to play with that's why i love mac so i'm gonna go ahead and just add some highlight we're everywhere like this is a glam look i get to play i'm gonna use my fan brush i'm just gonna pack that on and i'm really just going to can't see Making sure to get it on my cheekbone. I'm really rubbing it in because I want that champagne sheen that it has along with the glitter. It's fine, but I really want the sheen. And I'm building. I'm not moving the brush around too, too much because I don't want this this highlight to go everywhere. I want it to stay in place. So it's really important to just really be patient and just work it in. I can even go back and forth if I really want to get it hot in that area. I'm going to take some on my hand and place it on the tip of my nose.
a little bit in the temple. Now, if I really wanted to have some of that glitter to kind of stay on there, actually, no, I'm not even gonna do that. What I what I am gonna do, cause I, I feel like it's enough. It's enough of that glitter. I'm gonna actually go in with a little bit of Trophy Wife over here, that pretty, pretty gold. And I'm gonna add some of this, cause I love just using this just to add, because it's just glitter. That's all it is. So if I wanna add a bit more high glitter, like I would run to this first, because it's gonna be easy effortlessly. With with this, I wanted to, I thought about, you know, adding some um, setting spray to my face, which will then give this something, the glitter in this, something to adhere to. But because this is more finely milled compared to the glitter in here, it just glides on effortlessly. And it's giving me that two dimensional. It's like it's sh it's that champagne sheen from the Mac Mineralized Skin Finish, and now it's that gold flex coming from this Trophy Wife. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Like you don't have. That's one way to get like super high shine from certain products by building and adding on to them. And I don't even have to work so hard. Like one light swoop, that is it. Doing more than that would be, you you, you just like, just don't do it. <laughs> it gets worse. <laughs> it just, you're just gonna make it worse. I am gonna put some on the center of the nose. Just a little bit. For my setting spray, I'm gonna go in with some airbrush setting spray, Party on Night by um, Charlotte Tilbury. Okay, so that is it, you guys. Thank you for watching this full glam makeup that is guaranteed to turn heads. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Other than that, you guys, please like, a thumbs up, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye, beauties.